every time you sent me, you know, the next clips to listen to, I would go running because I, I live with my best friend and her brothers. And I literally would go, you've got to hear this. You've got to hear that we did this. This is incredible. I picked the right man. <laughs> you knocked it out of the park. Your narration on it was incredible. I had auditions, probably about 230 auditions. My and goodness. I sat there for hours and hours and um and I finally found Graham Mack and he read <laughs> my book. Women <laughs> <laughs> They want to hear you. They want to go to sleep with your voice. They want to throw panties at you because you have that voice. There was one of them that stood out, and I thought, yeah, that, that's going to be that one. But let me hear the rest out first before I make a decision. And then I heard yours, and I was like, oh, it's, it's him. He is it too. <laughs> Passion really I, I came through. And there's like one chapter toward the end. Um, if you recall, like there's a kind of a section where someone's on trial, it, 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 Magnus, and, yeah. uh, and there's a lot of characters' voices happening at once. And the way that you were flipping between them and the amount of mo emotion and passion that you were putting into it, I, I actually got a little teary-eyed. I, I was like, oh, wow, like, th this is good. This is like not just like my writing anymore. This, this is like what Graham's adding to it. So I, I really enjoyed it. What, what you've done to the books really marries with how it read in my head. So the emotions, the tone, um, at particular pieces and particular chapters and the delays between the words and the delays, uh, especially in the funny parts, like the humorous parts, when actually they're just looking at each other because they're, they're a bit confused and you somehow get that across, whereas another narrator may have just read that and it would have been quite flat. I was a little nervous at first because this was my first book, never, never got anything published like this before and... I was like, well, my husband listens to a lot of audiobooks. And I was like, well, why don't I try that? And then I saw some of the prices and I was like, oh, that's a little expensive. But then I heard your voice and I was like, that's that's the voice for this book. I like that's what that's the voice I pictured. I was like this. I need to have Graham do this book. You are amazing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely amazing. <laughs> I mean, I love, I love the the, the long range unit, uh, oh, yeah. the Cockney accents you bring out with, with Dusty and all those guys. Oh yeah, my yeah. god, I wet myself because they, because you bring the humor to it. Every I sent you know, little passages from what you did to friends, and they said you picked the perfect narrator. This <laughs> man, he's he's got so many nuances to his voice and can do so many different voices so easily, slipping between one and the other, and. And you had a sort of creepy uh, quality the way you did did the the evil uh, what's his name uh, on the the runes story. Oh yeah, yeah, you really yeah. did. You, you <laughs> yeah. had it. I don't know what it is, but it was creepy. And you just did a masterful job of conveying the exact tone that we were going for when we wrote these books. Uh, you really got the balance of the of the humor and the message and everything, and, and tied that together. And uh, you know, Darren would uh, would send me some samples of some people he was listening to, and it was just like absolutely no, no, no. And as soon as we heard you, it was just like this is a great fit. We listened a little more. We're like. This is the guy. This is the guy. He gets it, and we just knew it immediately. And uh, you really did a fantastic job uh, with the reads on this book. So I would also tell people, don't just read for the content. It's a, it's a great listen. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, I've had people that they read my book, but then when they listened to you do the audio on it, said, oh, my gosh, this is, this is so real life now. I really, really feel involved with it. And so I'm doing this because I'm not just plugging my audiobook but our audiobook it's because it really helps the story it really helps tell it in a way that people can go wow I can take that and actually seek more answers and actually see the line of thinking with this so yeah thank you you're the best <laughs> You know, the, the best thing in the world, you know, when you're you're working with someone for a service is to, to meet someone that not only says what they do, but they do what they say. And, you know, your process was very clear. 
you're very concise you know you 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 take you go above and beyond to protect both yourself and the person you're working with so you know i was telling my wife i'm like look at this look at this he's you know this person's communicating you know <laughs> and <laughs> and what they want look they're they're telling me what they're going to do and it's available when they said it was going to be available if not before quite a few people have said to me who who read the book i know a few journalists who've read it five or six times for their own work and they always say that every time they reread it they spot something that they hadn't spotted before and i felt like that when i listened to your you know narration of it you would you would suddenly recount a story which of course i know well because i wrote it but i'd completely forgotten it and forgotten the significance of it and it might be a name of somebody who actually 15 years later i suddenly remember was involved in another big drug case or or you know something else so um i think people will probably be mining it for quite a long time still to come as i'm listening to your voice it, you just nailed it you know you you hit the right notes for each character and i was so surprised that like when we're dealing with an actual rendition of maria orsic <laughs> <laughs> who is a, you know uh ingo swan yeah. these people lived almost in another dimension and when you were voicing the character i thought wow he he's clicking very fast on the inside because it's not easy to pick up the thread and understand the magnitude of it and it's like whoa the elevators uh the elevator cables were just snapped and what the you know <laughs> and i'm not going down i'm going up what you know <laughs> we really appreciate how well you did i was amazed at your range to be honest with you i'm like look at that look at that look at that. and <laughs> since we had so many auditions you believe it or not this in the the first, second, or third line, um, most of the people were reading it not the way it was written. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just a little bit. And finally, so it, it stood out instantly, um, your first line or two. But your range, though, we're like, well, I guess that's how he sounds now. I guess that's how she sounds now. Sounds <laughs> perfect. You know, it's, like, well, it's like, who needs... J this is going to sound terrible, but... Um, we said this, my wife and I, who needs Jim Dale? <laughs> we love him, but who needs, who needs Jim Dale when you got, when you have Graham Mack? Loved it, loved it. And then after, after you did the audition, what, what killed it for me, what, 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 what gave you the job was uh, Blitzen. Oh, I howled and laughing at Blitzen. I made Blitzen German. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really, really, it still makes me laugh now. Do you mean when you when you wrote the the reindeer parts? Then you didn't really think of what their voices would sound like. No, it never it never <coughs> sorry it never occurred to me they could be multinational. Right. I, I, no, in in your head they're all they're all English. Right. Uh, the, the, you know the, they'd all they'd all got my voice. Right. So, uh, yeah. When you came along and characterised them and. Uh, uh, oh, blip, blitz, and I was, well, we were, we were both sat here, nearly crying. Oh, it was funny. Well, all I had was the words on the page, and I wanted them all to sound different, so that when each one was speaking, you knew that it was a different one. Because yeah. I think that's one of the things with an audio book is you, the listener has to know that a different character is speaking now. Oh, I mean, yeah. you're going to go, you know, Blitz and said, or Donna said, or Cupid said after it, but you've got you only get that afterwards. You've got to know when you hear the words first, yeah. um, which one it is. And so when I got to them, all I've got is the name to work on, and it said Blitz. And I thought, that sounds kind of German. <laughs> I don't know if I was thinking of like something horrible like Blitzkrieg or something, you know. But I got to, anyway, so I thought, oh, well, I'll try it. Because I tried a few out with each one until yeah. I found the ones that I thought delivered the lines the funniest. Yeah. You know, so the farting, was it Donna the farting one? Oh, yeah, was yeah. Like, was like, oh, pardon. It just, do you know, like, uh, what was that show? 
was it, I didn't know you cared and there was a bloke there was Stavely was a character on old northern sitcom and and he used to go I heard that pardon and <laughs> and so I had I had pardon in there and I yeah. thought well I'll I'll nick a bit of that and and that yeah. so I got that one for that and Cupid sounded like a bit more a bit more kind of um flamboyant so yeah. then Cupid speaks like that you know like almost <laughs> like like uh like it's like a Kenny Everett type character, you know, yeah. almost oh, yeah. like that. Who had a who had a character called Cupid, funnily enough, but nothing like this Cupid, nothing like. But and it was it was a bit like that. And then Blitzen, I made Blitzen made and and he's very it's not you know it's not funny you know because things are happening to Blitz and and Rudolph can't help it and God <laughs> knows and he's like so that was they, they all kind of um, they all kind of came together. It said it wanted an American, and I looked at the the audition script, and I thought, well, yeah, you want an American for all the Americans in the book, but I really <laughs> think the narration would work better as as my natural British speaking voice, just as yeah. it steps sets just slightly outside the story and tells the story, so Tell that it makes story. the characters more powerful. When I'd rather than me doing an American accent for the narration, and I've done that too. I've done books where I've done an American accent for the narration, but I think yeah, I think you're right. I think there is something about having a British accent for the narration, and then the the, na the natural accents of the characters, whether they're American, Russian, I mean, Vietnamese, that's whatever. That's one thing you can, I think you're able to do. I mean. I found that out. I mean, because I looked up your website and I, you, you had like at the time over 150 books you've done. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and I can go in there and listen to samples. And it's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. There's British accent there, but oh, wait a minute. There's that female character that may, you know, there's this, you know. So yeah. you had it. And then when you get a voice that fits it so perfectly, the <laughs> subject matter, like a Graham Mac, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck. You're stuck with goodness. <laughs> you are you are a godsend. I, I almost died when I when I got your email. Oh, why why is that? Oh, I, I looked up who you were and everything, and you were the first person to audition and 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 the company. And honest to God, you you are fantastic. You you, you made you made my wife cry, tears in her eyes, and everything. Oh my God. Oh really? Oh, really? oh but it's yeah. it's in the it's in the writing, Bob. It's in the the way that it, it's written. It's just oh, such a wonderful God. story, and it's just you, nice. But, it's just but, lovely to do. You know, you just get involved oh, I, in it. Uh, you are the master. There's no doubt about it, and it's so <laughs> great. It's, I love it. And I have loved picking up that book that you narrated. Those characters were so wonderful. Some of them, like the woman from Scotland, was spot on and uh the, the the guy from taiwan was another one and <laughs> the villain in the book that was perfect where you know with the uh what was the name one of the sopranos where he was uh um, Tony Soprano, Tony. yeah. Yeah. Well, you said in the notes you want him to be a bit like a Tony Soprano, so I watched yeah. a few things on YouTube so as I could get it done. I didn't want to do an impression of him, but I wanted to have the same vibe, and he was fun to do. Yeah. He was perfect. <laughs> so, you know, it was, I could not believe it when, when all those things came together, and I have the the audible version that was another <laughs> challenge getting it onto audible but you know everything came together magically in a way and you were a great part of that the hardest part of this book for audio is the fact that she is she can't talk yes right yeah <laughs> so so we've got a narrator who can't who only has her inner thoughts and when you started doing it with the echo chamber yeah i was like I seriously like played that part for like all of my friends. I'm like, you got to hear what he did. Cause they all, you know, the ones that read the book and they're like, Oh my God, that is so perfect. It was just, it was a take that you took that yeah. without, I didn't know how you were going to do it. And it was perfect. Cause then we knew that she wasn't saying anything out loud cause she can't cause yes. it'll kill her brothers. Yes. Um, so that extra step that you took was just like chef's kiss. Perfect.